Welcome everyone. You are here with First Thursdays and our first step uh, program that we are going to be sharing with you today with the Sustainability Alliance. Thank you for attending and I hope everyone is doing well and healthy and had a little rest uh, before they kicked off this new year. Thank you so much for being with us today. Again, you're here with the Sustainability Alliance for First Thursdays on First Steps, which is sustainability for small business, nonprofits, faith-based communities. And today we're gonna to hear a presentation on the pilot program that we're kicking off this year. And we're excited to be uh, in that mode this year to kick off the year, right? With the help of our guest speaker today, Rabbi uh, Mark Boone Fisterman, Rabbi of Council at the Synagogue of B'nai Amuna Congregation, B'nai Amuna, and the first third, First, there's, first Thursday, excuse me, uh, Rabbi will share with us today about this program and piloting for this year. And we wanna just make sure that we're helping people along their journey to uh, on that impact of one step at a time. So thank you again for joining today, Rabbi, and we look forward to hearing from you very soon. Uh, as you know, for the first 20 years of our organization, and we will probably stop sharing this, but we thought we'd share it at least one more time. You know, we operated under the name of Sustainable Tulsa and uh, the need for greater sustainability practices coupled with vision for greater impact required that we change our name to reflect our current activity and the fact that we do, we have grown. Uh, our scorecard program is now operating in seven states and 16 cities. The Sustainability Alliance stands for collaboration between our organizations, leading businesses and the communities we live in. So working together, you know, we all can make that world a difference. So thank you for uh, being with us along the journey. And if you're just joining us, we appreciate you being a part of this next 20 years with us. So um, again, I want to thank uh, my uh, you all for joining. And while we're uh, getting started, Morgan is going to launch an intro poll. And if you don't mind, please just take a moment to answer those questions on the pop-up uh, on your Zoom window uh, while we begin. It's really helpful. It keeps us um, uh, updated on what, how we can best serve you. So thank you for taking a minute to fill out that poll. Um, before um, we get begin, uh, begin our presentation, I wanna say a big thank you to our program sponsors who make First Thursdays like this possible. Our lead sponsor is Williams. Thank you to Williams for their continued support over the last couple of years significant support to First Thursday so that we can bring these great speakers and topics to you. So thank you to Williams and our neighborhood partners, Public Service Company of Oklahoma and PSO Wind Choice, and our community advocates, Cavanta, The Met, One Oak, Save Our Streams, Spirit Air Systems, Tulsa Farmers Market, Bank of the West, Camp Travera, and the Sustainable Advisors Alliance. Thank you to all of our sponsors, for their support and continue to help us bring programs like this to our to the community. Um, we also want to thank to uh, thank our board members. We appreciate that um, you continue to fur further this uh, our mission and continue to support us. I, I see in the room there we have uh, uh, Richard uh, Cox from Spirit Air Systems. And uh, we have uh, a couple past board members too that continue to join us there. So thank you to to Carrie and James for, for being here today as well. Um, and finally, I'd like to thank the incredible Sustainability Alliance team who work hard to bring this program to you, Teresa Kerrigan, Jill Maud, and Morgan Fairley. Um, if you want to support the work that we're doing together, um, become an individual uh, supporter of the Sustainability Alliance. Just for $25, we'll put your name uh, on the list of those that are a growing list of change makers in our community. So click on the link that's there in the chat and donate today. So thank you very much for everyone that helps us support the work that we do. Uh, with the beginning of 2023 here, we also have some special announcements we'd like to make. Um, let us congratulate two of our wonderful team members, Morgan Fairley and Jill Maud on their promotions. Uh, we're, we appreciate their hard work over the years and uh, continue to make us a better organization. So. Congratulations to Morgan. Uh, she's now our programs and development uh, manager and to Jill Maud, our accounting and office assistant. Thank you to both of them and send them a little congratulation in the chat, if you will. We appreciate their work and um, so excited to be able to share that. 
but we're still growing. And additionally, we're hiring two physicians and we encourage you to share with anyone you think would be a great fit for our growing team. Uh, the events and marketing position will be a full-time uh, position with uh, the Sustainability Alliance. And our first step pilot, which we're gonna hear about today, we'll be hiring a part-time pilot coordinator uh, this is a great opportunity for somebody that uh, once is looking for adding some other meaning in their life with a flexible schedule. So um, please reach out to Morgan at thesustainabilityalliance.org today. If you're interested in applying or have any questions about the position, more details can be found uh, soon on our website and we'll be sending out an email to the entire list. So reach out and we'll, we'll post on social media as well. So reach out if you have any questions, but we're really excited about these two new opportunities with the Sustainability Alliance. And please join us for our next First Thursday happening February 2nd. Another exciting update from our organization will be happening at the event where we'll officially launch our long awaited free sustainability app. Uh, please join us to learn about the app and how you can build your personal sustainability habits in a fun and engaging way. Sign up for our emails list to gain access to the event uh, and several events that will be around that. I invite you uh, to go to the website, thesustainabilityalliance.org uh, or the link in the chat now and uh, get signed up. Uh, we're really excited about sharing this app with you and it'll be a great uh, opportunity to to share that with the scorecard teams and with this new pilot uh, that we're launching. Uh, the Sustainability Alliance has a Facebook page. So to help better connect our communities, if you would like to connect with the sustainability minded people, join the Facebook group today. Morgan will put that link in the chat for you. And now Morgan, I'm gonna uh, pass the mic over to you uh, for our digital boots. Excellent. Thank you everyone for joining us today. We just have a brief word from some of our awesome sponsors. We're gonna start with Williams here. At Williams, we're focused on adding new technology and operating practices that deliver right here, right now reductions in global emissions, cutting edge emissions measuring and monitoring, certifiable and transparent emissions data, real-time energy optimization across the natural gas value chain, integration and delivery of the fuels of the future, meeting global energy demand and global climate goals. For us, this is just the beginning. Williams, we make clean energy happen. Okay, and up next we've got PSO. Um, Carrie, if you're here, would you yeah. like to say things? Hi everyone, so this is a time of year where we make resolutions. And I hope on the list of resolutions that everyone is going to try to be more energy efficient. So we have a lot of great rebates, not only for your business, but also for your home. If you're wanting to take advantage of you know, being more sustainable in your uh, energy management practices. So check out our website or give me an email if you'd like more information. Thank you. Thank you so much, Carrie, for sharing. Next up, we have the Met. Um, who offers recycling services throughout the year through their drop-off sites and special recycling events. The Met proudly provides meaningful employment opportunities for individuals with disabilities. Uh, find out more about their services uh, by visiting metrecycle.com. Next is our um, Save Our Streams. Um, this is a city of Tulsa department that promotes healthy waterways and pollution prevention through their storm water quality program. From environmental inspections and household pollutants collection, they offer various services to help you help our streams. Get in touch via email at stormwaterquality at cityoftulsa.org. And Bank of the West. Are you curious about the carbon footprint of your purchases? Bank of the West exclusively offers this service through their mobile app and donates 1% of net revenue from your bank, bank account to 1% for the planet at no cost to you. Do you have questions or are curious about signing up? Give Eric Anders a call at 918-877-4577. We also have Tulsa Farmers Market, which takes place every Saturday from May to November in the Kendall Whittier District. Make sure to check out their fall and winter schedules to get all of these local yummy fairs during these chilly seasons as well. And last up, we have Sustainable Advisors Alliance, who offers portfolio management, financial planning, 
guidance and solutions and community engagement opportunities um, all in-house. Give them a, a shout out at sustainableadvisoryalliance.com slash contact if you'd like to learn more. And with that, I will hand it back over to Corey. Thank you so much, Morgan, and thank you again to all our sponsors, and thank you for joining us today as well. So, um, so it's my pleasure today to introduce a, a friend and uh, an, an amazing human and um, in our community, which is Mark Boone Bitzerman. He was born in Detroit and educated in the public schools of Oak Park, Michigan. He graduated from the University of Michigan and was ordained as rabbi in 1980. Following ordination, Rabbi Fitzerman took a solo, a solo puppet, uh, pulpit and in Kansas City. Since 1985, he has served at the synagogue of congregation B'nai Amuna in Tulsa. During his tenure, Rabbi Fitzerman has focused on strategies of community building and social activism. One of these projects is the <laughs> Bakery, a pro-social commercial uh, enterprise at the synagogue, which employs formerly homeless, mentally ill citizens of Tulsa uh, on a, to stock up on a line of delicious cookies sold throughout the community. And I'm sure that many of you have received them from us over the years. Uh, Rabbi Fitzerman was also the co-founder of the New Sanctuary Network in Tulsa. It's a grassroots organization which fought against wholesale deportation of persons without documents through regular protests, advocacy, and coalition building. He's currently working on a reproductive justice and hopes to express his commitment to sustainability and environmental protection through the Sustainability Alliance with First Steps. Thank you for being here today, Rabbi. And Corey, thank you. I'm going to share the screen and get started. We have just a few minutes together this afternoon, and I want to make full use of the time I have. I think that most of us would say that our conversations about sustainability have a, a grim and dispiriting tone. Um, and for all the obvious reasons, California is melting before our eyes, along with many other parts of the country that are experiencing catastrophic weather events. And um, there's more, of course, on the horizon. We've got Thwaites Glacier, which is ready to detach from the um, from its uh, docking place in Antarctica. And at that point, <clears throat> we can all expect that sea levels will rise all over the world. Um, I I know that you I know that you know that Thwaites is called the Doomsday Glacier, and for very good reason. Locked up in that glacier are millions and millions of tons of water, and we will experience those effects in fairly short order. Um, at the same time, there's been good news, and I, I want us also to concentrate on that. This is uh, the picture of a wind farm in Weatherford, Oklahoma. As of 2022, just months ago, it came online, and it is the second largest installation of its kind in the country. I've lived in Oklahoma for a very long time. But I don't think I expected that the largest wind farm or the second largest wind farm in the country would be occupied in, in what would um, be stationed in my home state. And, um, and this odd note, uh, in the New York Times last week, I saw an editorial that said that short people are good for the sustainability cause. As a short person myself, I am relieved to hear this news. We take up less space. We're less of a burden to the environment. And um, there is uh, there's some hope that if there were simply more of us on the planet, we'd, do, um, we'd be a lot better off. Um, I want to move quickly now through a kind of handbook that I prepared for small businesses, businesses actually of all kinds, uh, not-for-profit agencies, and communities of faith intended to introduce 
the idea of an incremental steps program to get groups started thinking and enacting in the sustainability space. Who we are is me and Corey Wren Williams and her staff of the Sustainability Alliance. And this program is called First Steps, a program of sustainability for all of us together. Um, Getting started, and I want you to imagine that you've just been handed a booklet about six by six inches, uh, not intimidating by design in any way. And it introduces some first thoughts about first steps that every group that I could imagine might take in the months ahead as part of a Uh, an experimental cohort to move in the direction of a greater commitment to sustainability. All of you are familiar with the language of scorecard. It's really the gold standard for the Sustainability Alliance. Synagogue came to be part of it early along, and we've very much benefited by our connection. And we took it seriously from the outset not only because it's the right thing to do, but because we're intensely competitive and there's very little we wouldn't do to be uh, gold star winners in in almost any um, uh, competitive arena I can imagine. But it's a very carefully constructed program designed to bring groups like ours along in many different dimensions of sustainability activity. It requires a high level of accountability. And we had the resources at the time we joined the Sustainability Scorecard Network to do it right. Um, We we also realized um, along the way that it would be good if there were alternatives to scorecard that gave people an experience of success early along and that moved them in the direction of a kind of scorecard commitment um, along the way. That's what First Steps is really about. Um, uh, An unpressured walk in the direction of sustainability so that groups like congregations, small businesses, not-for-profit agencies could begin to move themselves. I, I think the right direction is about the best language I could use for this purpose. Um, what we do is this page. It's It describes a self-guided journey that's within reach for any business owner or director or faith leader who could, side by side with a motivated volunteer, mobilize a group to make decisions in favor of different forms of sustainability. We'll get to that in a couple of minutes because you all know that sustainability is bigger than recycling. It includes that, but it's a a bigger notion of um, justice for all peoples um, and a way of standing in the world, which is deeply, powerfully, and uh, open-endedly respectful. Um, The program offers to each uh, participant Um, a a guide uh, slash advisor, and his or her job, that's the position that Corey described just a moment ago, Um, his or her job is to get you through the rough spots and make certain that, um, that um, that you stay on course without um, losing sight of the values of this program or its basic rhythm. It's hard to do anything outside the immediate mission circle of your core commitments. That includes a program like this, and we want for every participant to be linked to this program through a living human being who is always in touch, not in an intrusive way, but in a way that experience and energy get shared in um, in a kind of graceful communication. Um, first Steps is designed, as I've tried to say for everyone, 
And I'm going to show you some alternatives from the very beginning. Um, this is a picture of people convening. I, I want to be the guy with the cool tattoo, but um, there are lots of hands in that picture, and it will require some doing to bring people together. Try hard if you decide to participate, not to get caught up in bureaucratic over-processing. I think that that is sometimes the death of programs like these. You want to recruit people who care a lot about our relationship with the planet and make sure at the same time to include a healthy skeptic. And the idea at the very outset is to ask a couple of simple questions. What are our strengths? And what are our weaknesses? And you have to be radically honest about this stuff. We are coming into the third anniversary of our national, international experience with COVID. And if you took a, uh, took a hit and you haven't yet recovered, then it may not be time for you to participate. I hope it will, but you have to be honest about yourself. Are you in the middle of a hiring crisis because nobody's available to work for you or to work at your agency? Don't be afraid to hit the pause button. Every month's suggested goal comes with an extra credit possibility. And if you decide to go ahead, produce a single sentence, a statement of principles that expresses and projects the commitment of your team. It could be as simple as we're ready to take on an experiment in sustainability. Here's an alternative if you are either here representing a faith community or you decide to take this back to your mosque, or your church, or your synagogue in Tulsa or anywhere. And this picture sets the scene for, say, a mosque community deciding to be part of first steps. And the idea is. In month one, <clears throat> you'd probably want to convene, but you'd also want to go to the texts of your tradition. What are the commandments, the narratives, the oral traditions, the images that address our relationship with the created world? And again, the idea is to be scrupulously honest. If I were looking at classic Jewish sources, I would be disturbed by the notion in the book of Genesis of dominating the created world in a way that puts power in the hands of human beings and discounts the prerogatives of other elements of creation. I'd also look at Deuteronomy, though, and I'd see the author of Deuteronomy's commitment to sustaining the natural world, even in periods of wartime, protecting fruit trees and orchards, and refusing permission to the human community to construct siege works from useful, um, beautiful um, uh, trees and plants that provide nourishment for the whole of the human community. Which sources are negative and problematic, and which which are which are are um, strengthening when it comes to the cause of sustainability. There's an extra credit component in month one for faith communities that involve propagate that in uh, that involves propagating the meme. Um, make certain that the faith community that you represent or are part of. Um, that that people within that community know the resources of the tradition and bump into them all the time. So month two is an exercise that many of you have done already, I'm sure, and I hope will be useful for those who haven't. It's a check your bills exercise. And this is the beginning of uh, the way progress really happens in institutions like the ones all of us represent. When you sit down with a record of what you've done over the past three years and begin to take it seriously, it points in the direction of goals that are truly attainable. Here's my thought, and that's that if you measure what water you used in April of last year, April of the year before, and April of the year before that, 
and you average that and set a goal of using 5% less, you may be able to achieve savings on many different levels that wouldn't be possible unless you were fully aware of what your organization's been doing. You can do that also, and here's the extra credit component. You can do that also in the area of electricity. In fact, in any area where you want seriously to reduce your use of natural resources. Take a look at what you've done, average out what you've done over the past three years, and set a goal for reduction. I think that that's something you could accomplish regardless of the setting of your work, and that includes business, obviously, the not-for-profit sphere, and the faith community. Let's go on. Um, I love the idea of planting trees. Many of our traditions celebrate the primacy of tree planting and the importance of treating trees as an essential um, component of our um, of our well-being. Um, my hope is that in month two of this journey for many of you, you will shift to tree planting as a way of recognition, marking recognition and marking um, life cycle events. I think I'm speaking here of the faith community um, in this way. Um, set aside plaques, um, set aside um, uh, uh, lo loose site um, uh, desk ornaments and shift to planting as a way of saying how valuable a trailblazing employee has been in your organization. Um, in a faith community, plant a tree for every child born into the congregation. And then in this extra credit mode, um, I think that it would be very meaningful for everyone in the circle of celebration to get a sapling, um, a take-home sapling, so that a tree could be planted um, as the echo of what you've done in your workplace. Um, I'm concerned about our time, so let me move quickly forward. Remember that sustainability is also about uh, issues like a living wage. Um, at the synagogue, we've decided that we wanted very much for our own staffers, and that means um, everyone across the board. We wanted our own staffers to make $15 an hour. We set the goal. We achieved it in relatively short order. And the hope of First Steps is that you might be able to do the same. Um, if you can do it within three fiscal years, that would be uh, uh, both, I, I hope, uh, a reasonable goal and the kind of thing that would give you an opportunity to plan. Um, extra credit, same resolution, a different timeline. Um, everybody makes $15 an hour at least um, within the next budget of the institution. Go forward to number four. That is a tub. I think it's turkey. Um, but um, the idea of eliminating food waste of any kind, I think is essential to anyone or any group, <coughs> excuse me, who takes sustainability seriously. Some of you may have seen last week's article, again, in the New York Times about Ohio and its efforts to eliminate food waste, I think that a 20% reduction in a community that decided to tackle this issue seriously is a remarkable step in about a year. Uh, the community took the challenge very seriously and actually weighed out food waste in garbage bins collected from uh, a thousand households. That's what it means to be serious about records keeping and serious about setting goals um, in each of these domains so that you know where you've been and you can settle into a groove that takes you where you'd like to go. Um, extra credit, you can see that for yourselves. Pack up 
um, whatever you uh, haul out to a food pantry after an event in your institution and um, uh, pack it in uh, reusable or recyclable containers. Um, here's something that I'd like to suggest for month six, and that's to test for air quality. We've done this, this at the synagogue because we wanted to know more about how air circulates within our uh, facility. And it turns out that there are lots of um, small devices which will give you a good idea of how much carbon dioxide is in the air. There's a general consensus that if you've got a lot of carbon dioxide floating around, you've probably got a lot of other things too, including COVID virus. And if you manage to circulate air more efficiently and more thoroughly, there's a good chance that you have cleared the facility of other contaminants that may be injurious to your employees or your constituency. Um, buy an SAF Aeronet 4. They're a couple of hundred dollars a piece and uh, sustain the Sustainability Alliance is, um, is now uh, putting together resources for micro grants that will help you acquire a device um, and um, get a good indication of what's happening within your four walls um, and call on the professionals if it seems that it's warranted. Uh, over a thousand um, micro particles per, um, oh my goodness, I, um, I think I'm going to blow the, uh, the measure exactly, but we look for anything under a thousand as a good number for the synagogue. Um, here's a suggestion in month number seven that you build a garden, but not any kind of garden. This is a parking lot garden. Um, we'll provide the lumber. If you can't provide it for yourselves, set it up in one parking space and do a little bit of virtue signaling, which we hope won't strike your community as pointless or silly. It's designed, and you have to make sure that it's within hose distance of the walls of your institution. It's designed to say, that at some future time, you hope that the world will be less parking lot and more park and garden space. Um, make it abundant, make it a project for some group within your faith community or with your agency and grow something uh, green and fresh and right in a horse trough in one of the parking spaces in your lot. Let me go on as quickly as I can. Um, this is a picture of a National Resources Defense Council protest against an environmental sin. They call it the attack of the angry nerds. And the idea in month eight is to amplify your efforts. Take a risk. Write a collective letter of protest to an elected official. Um, issue a press release. Say that there is something happening in our world which you either want to see more of or you find abominable. But I think that every group, particularly when the future of the planet, our own children and grandchildren are at stake, can afford to take these kinds of risks. The extra credit suggestion here is that you make a financial commitment to a local, regional, or national group. There's a lot that individuals can do, but when individuals band together and join with other groups, we get the advantages, all of the advantages of scale. And I think that from the very outset, we have to connect ourselves with other people doing the same things that we find valuable. If you are a tribe, if you are a faith community, I'm sorry, the alternative in month eight might be a quilting project. Uh, I think you could do this in an agency as well, but um, there are lots of things like this that happen all the time in faith communities, and um, it helps to answer the question, what are we going to do with fabric and garment waste in the world which um, is the byproduct of fast fashion? Take 
everything that um, people in your community can provide, cut it into eight inch squares, quilt simply and quickly, and make sure that the newly married and the uh, newborns in your community of faith get a gift from mosque, synagogue, church, and that expresses the commitment to the community to upcycle, to recycle, and to make use of the things that get bailed and shipped across the world, uh, only to find their way into uh, landfill um, in, um, in West Africa. Um, <clears throat> here's a lawn. We have to deal with this. This happens to be a church lawn, but I regret to say that the synagogue long, depending on how attentive we've been, but attentive in the wrong way, looks a little bit like this. So tackle the lawn. We shouldn't be using pesticides and herbicides on church property or, frankly, any property. Um, see how much you can tolerate. Start with one section of the lawn and stop treating it or uproot it entirely and put down either less thirsty plantings or mulch. The uh, goal here, whichever way you can get there, is no monocultural lawn on the campus of any of the, any of the institutions we represent. Now, folks, I really have to make tracks and get you to the end. This is obviously a suggestion about rethinking transportation. Trucks and personal vehicles produce an enormous, um, uh, an enormous number of greenhouse gas, greenhouse gases, pollutants, and particulate matter. And my feeling is that the more quickly, I'm, I'm clearly not the only person who thinks this, the more quickly we move to electrically um, driven vehicles, the better off uh, we'll do. Install a charging station in your parking lot and give away the recharging that people um, come to you in order to um, in, in, in order to hook up, um, hook up their vehicles. It's a place where you can offer a benefit to your constituency at very little cost. Um, that's a cow fart, or the closest I could come to a cow fart. Um, and what it says is that we all need to be eating food, mostly plants. The methane that comes from a feedlot is a dangerous pollutant and we need to be vegetarian forward. So if you are a group that regularly serves meals to your constituents, um, we do that at the synagogue all the time, foreground the vegetarian alternatives, make them a priority and price them, even if they are not substantially less expensive than a meat meal, price them in a way that expresses <clears throat> excuse me, your commitment, the extra credit. Michael Pollan's In Defense of Food is a Bible for me. So is Jonathan Franzen's Eating Animals. And I think that a community read of both books might be very useful uh, for people who take this seriously. Um, here's an alternative uh, for tribal communities. Practice food sovereignty. This is a really significant issue in the Native American world. Um, the Onondaga National Farm has done remarkable work in, um, in New York State about restoring the traditional cuisine of the tribe and restoring the link between farm and ranch and table. There's a seed saving component, a heritage, um, a heritage growing program that I find very attractive. Um, if we were to do that uh, at the synagogue, we'd probably be planting Polish beets um, uh, from uh, seed stock saved uh, by uh, Polish communities um, of our own ancestors, but um, other groups could take up, uh, could take a, a, a turn practicing food sovereignty, but it is a natural step forward for the native community. Um, here is um, a final suggestion for 
month 12, and that's by nothing. Uh, it takes its cues from those uh, uh, adorable small libraries all over our neighborhood. You come and drop off a book and you take a book, but I think that the buy nothing movement um, in agencies, businesses, and faith communities like ours could be a real step forward. Um, put everything online, um, give it away to the first person who makes contact. That's been a complication in the buy nothing movement that uh, people uh, e evaluate their potential uh, non-buyers and, uh, and a great deal of bad feeling apparently is collected around initiatives like this. Um, the only rule is that everything should be free and you have to give to the first person um, who asks. And finally, um, here's the capstone. Make sure that you recognize your heroes. Um, every group is going to have people who step forward in an energetic and important way and give their time, their resources, their treasure to projects like this. And the more we say yes to all of that, um, I think that the I, I think the better off we'll be. Um, people do things sometimes out of the goodness of their hearts. They sometimes do them because they are driven by their own philosophical commitments. And sometimes they do it because they respond to the promise of recognition. Uh, I don't know about you, but I try not to be a purist. Um, that's okay with me. Whatever moves the needle, whatever mobilizes a community is um, is is a good tool when it comes to sustainability and and the big idea that lies behind state sustainability, and that's that we've reached the tipping point. It's not five years off. It's not 10 years away. It's not something that our grandchildren will experience and we won't. It's now, and we have to use every possible tool in order uh, in order to uh, bring us into bring us into alignment with our deepest commitments. Um, final thoughts. Um, we're ready to start. I know that Corey is about to talk to you uh, on the question of logistics and coordination. We want to put a human guide at your disposal. We want uh, to open conversations that are rich and alive, and we want to put resources in your hand. And that includes um, some very good material from the federal government. There's a terrific piece called Supporting Healthy Houses of Worship. It deals with the question of environmental contaminants, but it could be useful um, not only for the faith community, but for anyone who wants it. I want to thank you for listening closely to me. I, I'm sorry about the interruption in the middle, but I hope I didn't lose your attention because um, this cause, like the others I've tried to commit myself to, um, is, is important to me. And I want to communicate um, both uh, seriousness and optimism and a kind of practical doability this morning that um, that proves attractive to all of you. Corey, back to you. Thank you so much, Rabbi, and thank you for all of your thoughtful um, components that you put into this and opportunity to get started and to really stretch that opportunity. And uh, we couldn't be more thankful for all the time and, and the beauty of this piece as well that you put together. And I know we're gonna have, uh, we've got a lot of comments and I'm sure we'll have some more questions. I, I'm gonna, um, and, and again, I wanna emphasize, this is a pilot that we're launching uh, right now and and, uh, and working with Rabbi Fitzerman here for the, the cohort of the faith-based community. And then we'll have some other cohorts that we'll be sharing. Uh, past the, the pilot. So uh, thank you again, Rabbi. I think Morgan's gonna um, add some context to the timeline and some other pieces of it. And then we'll get to a few questions before we, we uh, finish out for today, Morgan. Yeah, thank you, Corey. And thank you so much, Rabbi. This is a, a great presentation and I'm very thrilled to be working with you on this endeavor. Um, so our, our hope for this program is that it really does allow all types of organizations and businesses to start making a difference with as few barriers as possible. Um, we can't wait to see how it grows and how we can tailor the steps to work for a wide variety of groups, potentially including schools, youth groups, small manufacturers, farmers, and more. 
Uh, so stick around with us after the program today ends if you're feeling inspired about this idea and want to discuss more with us. I will take us to the timeline now that we have for our pilot. So what we'll see is that we are beginning to select pilot participants now before the pilot cohort of faith communities kicks off in April. Following that kickoff, the pilot coordinator will work, work with members to complete one step of their choice per month and apply for those micro grants that Rabbi Fitzerman mentioned uh, in order to make those steps possible to achieve. Then grants will be awarded around July and the pilot will wrap up in October of this year. Um, at that point, we'll, we will begin to accept applications for co cohort groups until the official program launches in January of 2024. So about joining, the pilot membership um, will be free for participants. Will be free for participants, and all will have the ability to receive micro grants for their efforts. We are planning on selecting ten communities to participate. That we would love to have a, a diverse range, um, a diverse range of, of different types of faiths uh, present in that uh, to help them take their first steps and to improve their triple bottom line. And if you're curious about joining that pilot. Uh, and taking your first steps with us, please reach out to me. Uh, you can reach me at morgan at thesustainabilityalliance.org today. All right, with that, we are going to launch our exit survey and then jump into Q&A afterwards. If we do have time, we do have time for maybe one or two questions from the audience. If any uh, were shared, any questions? I know there's some interest asking if certain communities are going to uh, participate, and so we are definitely. If you are, I, I do want to emphasize that, as Morgan did, if you are part of a faith-based community, I know many of you are part of what we're doing um, uh, in other uh, for. Uh, of our other programs, but if you're part of a faith-based community you think would be interested in this, you know, please reach out to Morgan. We really want to, to test this out to see if this is um, a new service that we can provide and be in that kind of in-between of coming to a first Thursday or a B2B and uh, really delving into the scorecard and, and helping folks get started. So um, anyway, I, 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 let's see, are there any questions? Um, let's see, I don't know if anybody sent any in, but um, Reba, I think while we're waiting maybe for one question here, I know that you all were, uh, you know, a Bellman winner uh, with Scorecard. What did you find as one of the, you know, biggest challenges of organizing your team to get started, uh, because that's a big part of this is, you know, there's interest and you hear about it in meetings and people make comments, but then it's like to really organize the group to start taking action. What was, what, what would you say was kind of the biggest challenge getting started? I think with scorecard, the issue was we had to master the technology of the program. At the same time, we were trying very hard to organize ourselves in a meaningful way. And it was difficult to allocate the resources that we needed to, but it was a case of commitment carrying us through. We wanted very much to have measurables from the outset that, that assured us that we were on the right track. And I would say coming out of that experience, I, I, I wanted for there to be a kind of stepping stone to scorecard in the form of a program like the one I've just described that was less heavy in its demands on upfront investment and allowed people to put their toe in the water and move in the direction of scorecard or any other kind of commitment, but to experience um, success from the very beginning. I should say that a successful um, first steps participant would complete eight, seven, eight, nine of the uh, of the goals. And groups should not hesitate to hit the pause button at any point along the way if they find themselves up against challenges that they did not expect. 
Thank you so much. That's very helpful. I think that's, uh, you know, one of the things that's so important is that, you know, uh, forward motion sometimes can be a pause and a step back, but you have to, <laughs> need to, to move that forward. So thank you for that insight. And I think just due to time, what we'll do is we'll we'll wrap up here. Maureen, is there anything else you wanted to add before we wrap up? And, and then hopefully uh, people will stick around for another 15 minutes if they want to uh, talk directly to Rabbi or ask any more questions about the, uh, the program. Do you have any uh, last comments? Uh, really, I just think that it would be great to hear, Rabbi, kind of your excitement for this program is so obvious. Um, what really is uh, attracting you to making this uh, First Steps program happen? Um, I've always been attracted to doability and the idea of tackling something, experiencing success early along is, is a contribution that I think all of us can make to one another. I, I, I think that having a guide, a hand-holding presence in this process will be essential to most people's success. Somebody who's on the phone with your coordinator, somebody who's taken the lead in first steps and simply saying, what can I do for you this week? What can I, what resource can I bring? What, what order can I place for a, um, uh, uh, an air monitor? I, I think that um, the idea of getting started without a whole lot of um, preliminary organizational work, um, without having to write a manifesto, without having to promise a 20-year commitment, without all of that, I, I believe that incremental steps are essential in most areas, especially when you're tacking, tackling a complicated issue like sustainability. We can't do this alone, but we have no alternative but to be engaged and involved individually. And I want I, I wanted to suggest a, a kind of patterning here of behavior that would allow you to take some quick first steps and um, and uh, and feel the benefit of those steps um, at at an early point in the process. Thank you so much, Rabbi. That was very very good to hear. And like I said earlier, we're just thrilled to be able to be working with you on this. Thank you, everyone, Thank you. for joining us today. I'm going to just turn it real quickly while we've uh, hit our time. Um, Corey, would you like to say our closing remarks? Yes. Um, thank you again for joining us for uh, kickoff of 2023. We hope to see you uh, a lot this year. We'll have some other opportunities to, to see some of you in person here in the Tulsa area, but we are eager to continue to uh, bring our community together across uh, the United States and, and sometimes outside of the United States. So thank you all for joining us today. Uh, again, I want to thank our sponsors, our lead sponsor, Williams, our neighborhood partners, public service company of Oklahoma and PSO Wind Choice, our community advocates, Cavanta, The Met, One Oak, Save Our Streams, Spirit Era Systems, Tulsa Farmers Market, Bank of the West, and Camp Travera, and our newest Sustainable Advisors Alliance. Thank you all so much for your support. Thank you all for being here. Uh, stay healthy, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Stick around, and uh, we will, um, and we'll see you actually at the next uh, first Thursday, February second. Uh, and uh, but uh, stick around, and we'll uh, have an opportunity to visit a little bit further. If you have some other questions for Rabbi or for our team, uh, have a great rest of the day, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Take care. <laughs>